Your art has no boundaries. The world does. Borders make our world more complex. But if you know your direction, we can show you the way. We are Dutch culture. We help Dutch creatives with international ambitions by providing our knowledge and global network. And when our culture goes abroad, we keep track of past events. Now, this is where you come in. This data is all yours, so take advantage of it. Search for artist names and events in your discipline or filter on location. Follow the lines to find out who walked the path before you. So go ahead and discover, where will it lead you? Dutch Culture, your partner for international cultural ambitions. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the third day of the International Queer and Migrant Film Festival Amsterdam. My name is Chris Belloni. I'm the director of the festival, and it's a pleasure to welcome you to the third online talk, Art Night Out. Uh, tonight, we have some special guests um, from Turkey. Um, we're going to discuss the film Scenes I Imagine, which has this wonderful international premiere at the festival. And we're very happy and grateful with the attendance of filmmaker Metin Akdemir and producer Irem Akbal. Um, they're uh, signing in from uh, Istanbul and the talk will be moderated by Simon van Sarlos, who will be here with us uh, from Amsterdam. And after a 30 to 45 minute talk, the um, panel will gradually evolve in a wonderful and splashing party with DJs Kubra and Mama Kiel. So the floor is yours, Simon, Metin, and Irem. Hello. 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 Hello, beautiful people. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Congratulations Fine. with your international premiere with scenes I imagine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> We are a bit excited, I think, right now. <laughs> yes, I can imagine. Well, um, first, as a housekeeping observation, I will just share that people who are watching can drop a question in the chat. So later on, we will return to your questions. That's just for the audience, whom we cannot see, but we can see each other. And you both look amazing. Uh -huh. Thank you. <laughs> congratulations again. And maybe, um, Metin, you are the director, Iram Ak Akbal, you are the producer of this film, Scenes I Imagine. Uh, it also has a Turkish title. Hayalimdeki Sahneler. Okay. And Metin, you are also the director of I've Come and I've Gone, the Turkish title, you want to say it? Yes, Ben Geldim Gidiyorum. <laughs> and the Kupele Bats. Yeah. If I say yeah, the name of the pool is Kupeli, is an, but international title is Kupeli Bat. And you're also part of the Drama Queer Collective. Um, you're working in art, organizing exhibitions, etc., yeah. etc. Et and this yeah. is your new film. Yeah. Um, now we have a bit of a problem because we cannot see the faces of our audience. So we also do not know whether they've seen your film. It was screened twice. It was screened on Thursday at the Queer Migrant Film Festival in Amsterdam, and it was screened today. Um, so maybe we just balance it in the middle a little bit. We just say that most people have seen it, but in case people need an introduction, we just explain again. Uh -huh. um, Maybe to introduce the film a little bit, uh, as well as sharing my viewing experience. Um, I've seen scenes I imagine in Istanbul in October, yeah. which is Istanbul. now. Istanbul, yes. And um, I've seen it then, but without the subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't speak Turkish for those who do not know. Um, and I loved it even without subtitles. <laughs> I loved it a lot. Um, but I loved it even more when I saw it now being able to understand what was being said. Um, but I will describe a little bit what I saw um, for those people who have not seen it. Yeah. So what I saw without the text 
were scenes of films that were obviously vintage, that were obviously older than the current present. I could see from the quality of the image or the way that it was filmed. And I saw speaking people, speaking heads. Um, you could see from the way that they talked that they were knowledgeable about film and that they were being analytical. Um, and I heard Metin's voice yeah. as a voiceover. <laughs> And of course, I could feel that and uh, scenes I imagine is about um, films, older Turkish films that portray female women relationships where intimacy is present. And maybe potentially to a viewer like Metin Akdemir, there's also something sexual happening, or at least the potential of that. Mm -hmm. And then when I didn't see the sub, when I couldn't read the subtitles, couldn't understand the, what was being said, I thought it was very explicit because we also saw then the scenes reimagined. So you have the old, the old um, scenes from films, and then you have new scenes, and you can definitely tell like this is a current moment, um, and they're different actors, and there's definitely some sex or something is happening. <laughs> Am I explaining it correct? Like, I just tried to go back in time <laughs> from just seeing it. And, and then I thought it was a very explicit conversation about um, the older scenes and how they were, you know, meant to be gay or queer. But now that I saw it again, just last week, and I realized actually the talking about it, it's much less explicit. Like there's much less certainty about what the scenes portray and what the kind of intimacy is that we see. Does that feel like a correct, like this ambiguity is much greater actually when I was able to understand it. So I was also thinking I have a dirty mind that I'm like putting all of this in there that is very explicit. As we all have. <laughs> Maybe also, Metin, this is why you started making the movie. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> but maybe you can say, like, this is this is my sort of, you know, overview of how I've perceived yeah. it. But maybe you can say a little bit about why you started making it mm -hmm. um, and why with these films and why the reimagining of, sh of scenes. Okay. Um... Thank you to the festival also to you. It's a great pleasure to be part of International Queer and Migrant Film Festival. And also thank you to you, Simon. <laughs> um, when I was a student in gender studies master program in Istanbul University, I wanted to search my thesis about why women characters express as friendship or homosexual tension or sisterhood in Turkish film history, especially in 80s. But there wasn't any professor with whom I can work for my topic and who make queer readings in films. <laughs> so uh, I think if I cannot write this thesis, I can shoot it uh, mm -hmm. with a video essay perspective. So five years ago, we applied with our project, Unknown Shot Scene. This is the ex title of the, my film, with my ex producer to Golden Orange Film Festival Fund. It's called Uncensored Cinema. So then we won the competition with our project. Uh, after that, um, we lost Boysan. Boysan is my ex-producer in a car accident five years ago with my other two friends uh, in the same accident. And I had to stop making this film process for three years. And then I met with Iram and Art Production House. This is my production company name. And go on with them and finish it this March 2020. So this is the small summarize of my film journey about how do I start my film with Iram and why I shoot this film. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and starting with the scenes from the older films. Uh -huh. um, I don't know the titles of these films. I, I cannot uh -huh. produce them. Uh -huh. But uh, why was it why was it triggered? Why did it trigger you to make this film? These uh -huh. scenes. Uh -huh. um, I watched Turkish film, especially from 19s and 18s, about mm -hmm. women characters or women stories. So I figured out that there was not only woman friendship between these two women. 
these three films have a same, same dramatic flow, I guess. Uh, two women get closer and make the main character out of the game and become friend in these films. So that's how the space or door is open for the audience to make queer reading. Mm. Of course, for me, as a queer, I can also reading with that. I ask uh, on my own, is there any queer possibilities for women characters relationship? And then why do we find this gap or these gaps in these films? Because of censorship or auto censorship or just director want to show it as a friendship. So therefore I started to research these invisible uh, connections. You know what I mean? So actually, when I wear my queer glasses, <laughs> I find some queer ambiguity, both as an audience and also filmmaker. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was really something that struck me so deeply, actually, in watching <laughs> your film. Uh -huh. um, that that it, it's a celebration, or I, I felt I read it with my queer glasses as a... <laughs> <laughs> um, as a celebration of this ambiguity. Yes, that's true. Because, you know, maybe Judith Butler said that when we describe the queer, queer can be died. So ambiguity is important for the queer perspective or queer politics. Uh, but your, because, before this question, maybe you, you ask me why you choose these films, maybe. Yes, well, uh -huh. if you want me to ask that, why did you choose these films? <laughs> Before that, I, exp I explain my process. Now, maybe yeah. I didn't. I forgot to explain why I choose these films. Uh, I am a big fan of Art Filmas. Art Filmas is the second wave directors from Turkish film history, especially eighties. He shoot many films based on women characters. Hmm. Uh, there is a film that he direct. Name is Düşgezginleri. 1992 is English title Walking After Midnight. He shoot it. It's about two lesbian relationship. Maybe it is the first time about on an openly lesbian. So his two films are interested. This. So maybe we said that Art of Vilmaz is a kind of a uh, feminist director, also interested in the women character. Mm. Uh, other name is Two Women. So I I use two Art Vilmaz film. Other film is names two women from the director of Yavuz Özkan. These three films, uh, I think, have some similarities with, with the other two art film as film. So I selected these three films called, because they start as telling a story between two women and a man, and then they turn to stories between two women and no man. Yes. So we start to show the film, watch the film, with the two women story. So, uh, so it's a very neat for 80s or 90s. Maybe, you know, in 80s, there's a coup in Turkey, military coup. And after that, some movement is rise up, uh, especially feminism. So director from Turkey interested in women issue. So art of film is also interested in this topic, feminism, women stories, sexuality, identity, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So I do these three films because of these kind of similarities. Otherwise, uh, these three films have the same scene, I guess. Two women is lying the same position and wake up after the fade in and fade out and wake up with the with together again. We, we didn't see any sexual tension between mm. them. So this this kind of scene these three films have. So I think there is a gap between fade in and fade out. So I shoot my own remake scene and put it inside of these gaps. Yeah. Kind of ear gaps, maybe. <laughs> and when you put in the the scenes, right? So we have the the fate, the unknown. Uh -huh. How was it to to imagine new scenes? Because in a way, you're also taking away the ambiguity by reimagining. Uh -huh. But you're also giving. You're also just adding to the diamond of adding perspectives. You know. So mm -hmm. how did that go? This reimagining of the scenes. Okay. Uh, when I watch the film when I am a child, I always put my own scene inside of the film. This is also always my process. A little queer medicine, watch the film lying on the bed and making imagination and put his own scene, her own scene to the films. So, uh, but after I made interview with my actors, 
of these films, I totally understand that these three are complete. Uh, although these films are complete, there are still queer possibilities. And I thought that imagining and shooting the scenes I imagine. So I choose to shoot these scenes as a method to show queer possibilities for making remake scene. So I didn't make same decor and costume, but may only put to the my scene some light motif. For example, uh, maybe some kind of frame, maybe some clothes, some maybe earring. Mm -hmm. So uh, say hi to this old film with this kind of small uh, object, maybe. Mm. <laughs> Um, May and, I add? I'm mm -hmm. sorry, I just yeah. dropped. Yeah, yeah. And uh, using, uh, using queer actresses for making my remake scene for show the audience, yes, we can imagine with this kind of actor uh, with my film because my all actors is queers also. So yeah. uh, maybe I want to uh, making a change for the uh, normative actors for the film history in Turkey. You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, because you also interviewed the actresses that were in the 80s and 90s films. Uh -huh. yeah. They're also in the, um, in the film. Yeah. Iram, you wanted to add something. Yeah, uh, I would like to add that uh, when you uh, are telling us you're celebrating the queer possibilities uh, with your film, uh, I would like to uh, uh, give an example from the process, from our uh, working process with Metin. Uh, as Metin stated, the ex title of the film was Anna Not Non Shot Scenes. <laughs> and through the uh, journey, uh, we just found out that uh, calling this film as Anna Not Shot shot scenes is uh, making it straightforward, and we don't want to make it uh, as uh, straightforward and accurate uh, film project. Uh, what we are looking for this uh, queer methodological inquiry, and uh, as yeah, it's kind of a, a thesis uh, wise uh, film, yes, because it has an introduction, it has its own development, and uh, the ending. Uh, we are after this inquiry, uh, and then uh, when we started to call this film as scenes, I imagine, I think it finds its sincerity and uh, it makes us uh, more relieved and give us a space to search for more queer possibilities. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, through the processes, uh, we also change uh, and we found out that, uh, as uh, Butler says, definition makes us smaller and uh, give it, uh, uh, don't give us privileges. Yeah, uh, we, we don't have to make us bounded by definitions. So I just want to add that. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Um, yeah, I think we should go on one point, we should go back to this idea of Butler and definitions making us smaller in relationships maybe to censorship, but maybe let's continue talking a little bit longer about um, the actresses and oh. also um, your, um, yeah, the actresses, but also how you're thinking about female sexuality, whether that still matters at all. Like in a way we want to go beyond gender, of course, but then there's also the obvious fact that these are women, at least in the old films, portrayed in a heterosexual world and indeed like it's it's amazing to see especially if you don't have subtitles to see how the man is sort of just he just kind of leaves the scene like he's <laughs> out of the frame you know yeah <laughs> oh so good so <laughs> like I'm, I'm in this you know at the one hand i want to ignore um the gender differentiation and at the same time of course it's very important so maybe if you want to say a little bit more uh, Metin, how that, yeah, how that came about for you? Like, why w was it was it important for you that it was like lesbian intimacy, that it were women especially? Mm -hmm. yeah, of course, yes. Uh, first of all, I dedicated this film my close friend Zelish. She's so important activist for feminist movement and died with Boysan in the same accident. She's, he's also, she's also lesbian. And then lesbian identity is always in the invisible in Turkish LGBT plus movement. That's why I was attracted to these films and stories between women. In Turkey, there is not any lesbian role model. 
we can see guys popular person in popular culture music and film etc but uh, there is no lesbian uh, role model in the in our life you know mm. but in turkey it is accepted by the publics and politics that there is no lesbianism so that's why lesbianism is also ambiguous or invisible in the cultural industry uh, yes for example i am a member of the lgbt pride uh, for three years i, I didn't make uh, get, give the person's identity but uh, lots of gay also involved with the pride committee we didn't see any women or gender blender person so also lesbian uh, identity is always invisible uh, maybe last three years last five years maybe we can see not maybe three my last 10 years maybe we see lesbian in the area in the community so it's my uh, responsible to show the lesbian or queer lesbian person in these films uh, people ask me why didn't you uh, interest in the male or gay tension in the film so at first uh, i uh, grow up with the family with the women i have four sisters and my mother is a I say for her feminist mother. So this is my responsible should film these lesbian identity and queer identity, I guess. Mm. Sometimes I didn't want to use, say lesbian because it's also kind of making uh, normative identity expressed. So queer lesbian maybe is okay for me now. <laughs> um, um, Iram, anytime you want to jump in, just do so or make a little jump um <laughs> when you said earlier that the actresses themselves are all queer how was the process of casting mm. the, the people you worked with to imagine to reimagine the scenes yeah i, I can start mm -hmm. uh when we first met in uh the project was complete actually uh, so i was a lucky producer uh because they they with boy son uh told of everything about the project uh what was left is the money <laughs> uh, lack of money uh and the other things these other productional things and um Metin had some other names in mind uh, bon appetit. <laughs> uh, in mind uh, when we first start uh, to uh, work for pre-production uh, these names were quite famous uh, female actresses uh, from Turkish cinema uh, industry uh, actually they were really excited about the project but when we uh, first started to talk about the scenes that Metin imagined, uh, we found out that maybe it's not the click that we are looking for. Uh, then we changed our mind and uh, started to uh, trying our best to find the best actors and actresses. Then uh, we just uh, looked who were with us at that moment, who were close. And these were the people from the moment, uh, from the activist moment, our uh, actor and actress friends. Uh, and we just uh, asked them whether we, we want to do this with us. And they were really uh, attracted to the project as an artist and as an uh, activist from the moment in Turkey. That's how we uh, shape on the cast. Yeah. So maybe we said that for Iran, maybe you had it. We want to choose this kind of body positive actor for our film, not and some uh, straight looking person we choose. Yeah. For example, in uh, old film, Mujda R is a, some kind of fatty woman. Yeah, so we, yeah, we choose this kind of fatty, sassy woman as a like Mujda R, not a teen and uh, so butch lesbian actor, we find it. Uh, maybe you. Maybe you say something. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, as just Metin stated, uh, uh, because we are after for a queer methodology, we are also uh, looking for the bodies uh, which does not represent any uh, normative uh, definitions. Uh, so when we are first making the cast, uh, we are we were looking for payers, and uh, when we made our auditions. Uh, we just wanted to uh, 
let them play the intimacy in the scenes yeah. as they imagine, not as Metin imagined. Mm -hmm. so, and then we f then we found the game together uh, because they also have something uh, other than a uh, show in the film uh, when they watch the old ones. Yeah. So yeah. they played with it. Yes, I want I mean, something. Go ahead. Yes. And this is the story, backstage story for you, Simone. <laughs> Very backstage. Yeah. In the dance scene, my friend play, his name's Bulut Cesar. Uh, he's a gender person and he's haven't got a breast. And in the original movie, Shaika Tekan is a woman identity. So Bulut is a gender person. We making an argument about is Bulut wearing bra or not? Yeah. So we're talking about that. So is if if he want to wear, it's okay for us. Uh, and Bulut asked me, do you want, maybe I wear wig because Shaika Tekant in original movie have had long hair. So we said that, no, your short hair is okay for us. So you know what I mean. We always make connection to the actors and we decided it together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I should also not say actresses, but actors, actresses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I mean, just as a comment, it's not a question, but I, I remember also really feeling, and, and the, the scenes are not explicit in the sense that they are pornographic, but mm -hmm. it reminded me a bit of um, how ethical porn or what is considered sometimes ethical porn is made, right? Where you can see the joy of the people who are in, this, in the frame figuring out a certain scene mm -hmm. and the, the, the intimacy that comes from that. Um, that was really beautiful. And also at the end of the film, the moment that the, the actors or actresses, um, you know, when they're sort of, how do you say it is credited, yeah. they stand next to each other and they give each other a hug. Yeah. Which especially in this current time is, is just so moving. But also it made me think that you're really doing like this feminist crediting and, you know, like really making the people who you are making with um, highlighted, putting up front, centralizing them. Is is this also in your process of making? Is this what is important? Like I can see it in a film, but maybe you want to say something about how this goes when you're making together. Yes, maybe s small explanation about the hugging scene. <laughs> uh, in old film, these two women only hug and they, they are not sex scenes between them. So my actor, hugging and making some sexual tension. So I add, the uh, hug is not enough for me. <laughs> so I want to add something uh, yeah. ambiguity, another scene and put my own perspective. So that's it. <laughs> so maybe Iran wants to say something about it. And uh, the day uh, that we shoot these hugging scenes uh, was the last day of shooting. And it was kind of a celebration for us to finishing this film together because uh, if, uh, the actors were not with us in the process and probably we were not able to make it as uh, it is now. Uh, so uh, Metin has had this idea and he just wanted all of us to uh, have this uh, scene. For example, uh, I had another scene with Metin that we were hugging together. It was also a celebration for us uh, working on this project together. So, uh, uh, and uh, I, he always had this in mind to add these uh, actors uh, hugging each other, not in their roles in the movie. And uh, I think it gives this um, uh, personal uh, taste uh, to the imagination, taste to of matching to the project. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so maybe, uh, I want to add something. Mm -hmm. uh, in Turkey, if you are a queer person, you cannot find any uh, role for the popular culture, uh, TV or TV, TV series or films. So this is a kind of audition uh, scenes I want to do. Uh, in hugging scene, I said that please smile, please be angry, please turn back your right and your <laughs> left and then hug each other. So it's also making some audition with these actresses, but I said that you are selected. Your own. <laughs> you know what I want to shoot also this kind of audition process mm. or like queer person they cannot find any role for their play blah blah so mm. this is making uh, make it some roasting for this audition 
process in Turkey casting. Yes, are, and the uh, casting then makes me think about the gaze. Right? Yeah. Like how, as a filmmaker, how do you think about the gaze? Um, what does it mean also in your camera work and mm. the perspective that you take? Mm -hmm. um, uh, telling these movies are censored, but this is also my reading, I guess. So there is no evidence telling us about censorship. So uh, my uh, when I'm following this uh, research, it is my imagination, I guess. So I'm not telling that there is censorship. So in the traditional documentary making, the message is directly presented to the audience. So in CIS, I imagine, I try to clear method and I don't want to ground my hypothesis. Instead, I am after this research process. So I didn't want to make some uh, traditional camera position. Uh, um, I read an essay uh, from Laura Mulvey, Visual Pleasure, uh, blah, blah, I forgot the whole title. He said that when you make accept, expected camera, you do it the camera, you look like a, uh, you look like an, how to say, heterosexual gaze. So mm. I want to show all, all body of my scenes, not making some close up or maybe master, making some close up to the breast, to the other blah, blah, the part of the body. So I'm all, only, put my camera at the same position and making some maybe little movement with their move and don't make any different uh, close up and as aspect for with the camera. So this is the my camera position, making a feminist camera mm. uh, method. Uh -huh. I didn't explain no. very well. <laughs> no, you do. I want to add something. I think uh, this is also another thing uh, which gives the movie the ambiguity uh, because the title of the movie is Scenes I Imagine, uh, as Metin tells, and it's so accurate and so personal. But with the camera, uh, uh, the gaze of Metin is not uh, something uh, that focused on some bodily parts. It's also It also gives the ambiguity to... Uh, watch these uh, reimagined scenes. So I think there is this uh, uh, not definitive uh, method of uh, telling Metin's story, uh, which makes uh, this, queer, uh, this film queer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this also reminds me of a moment in the film when one of the actresses of the old films, so of the, the 80s or 90s films, she says something about She's kind of joking around and saying like, well, what did you expect? Like suddenly the camera is coming from behind. You see these two women laying down by the fire. They're <laughs> hugging like in a friendship way. But why is the camera so far away? Like, yeah. you know, there's some suggestion there because why else would it not be screened? Like you can see it well. Um, and it just, it's, it's, it reminds me to go back to maybe, like you were mentioning already, the censorship and also the question of what a queer aesthetic would look like. Um, yeah, how do we address this question of censorship? Like what, after your research, what do you think censorship means? Because I think so often we're thinking from this like Northern European enlightenment um ideal where it's like you have to say everything and you have to st show everything and you're only free when you show everything <laughs> and like you have to come out of the closet and you know like and not sort of detangling or dismantling what it even means to create a closet for people um Hmm. Okay, so now I'm just going on a little rant, but <laughs> I think it's important because but that's why I said like it's so that the movie touched me so deeply because of this celebration of ambiguity and it, it almost gave me the feeling of having a tool or a strategy or a response to this yeah to the hard demand of like having to come out uh -huh. and like pretending that there's only one way of being as long as you show yourself you identify yourself you tell in which box you belong and this film kind of for me goes against it but maybe I'm just doing my own queer glasses. Um, <laughs> Take it, mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um, but would you want to say a bit more about that? Like, what does this censorship mean for you after this research? Uh -huh. uh, Ida, maybe you can explain. Yeah. Uh, during the festival journey in Turkey of scenes I imagine, 
uh, we heard a lot that this movie inspired lots of people and they while they were watching they uh, just thought about other movies uh, and other queer possibilities in uh, different ones and we heard that a lot like after the screenings they just came uh, and uh, asked Matt whether he thinks of doing uh, the second or third scenes I imagine uh, this makes me think that uh, while you are uh, asking questions about censorship uh, if you do not state that this is censorship or this is not censorship or I, I am I'm uh, putting myself in a closet and uh, now it's auto censorship uh, just asking questions uh, gives you more place and uh, flourish uh, more possibilities it uh, it makes the audience uh, the same uh, yeah, for example for other movies maybe they never thought about it before but with scenes i imagine uh, they just uh, found the possibility that it's possible like uh, Metin always uh, mentions that you when you have your queer glasses you can uh, add any queer possibilities even to this glass it's possible uh, so uh, when I first started making uh, working with Metin I thought that okay this will be a project on censorship because uh, the first the ex title is so direct and it's some it tells something about uh, how old directors uh, at Filmas and Yavuz Özkan uh, found themselves uh, in a place censored. But during the process, uh, I think we have some uh, enlightenment uh, moment that it's not about the censorship in itself. Uh, censorship is just a tool for us uh, in this project to uh, to uh, free us uh, from talking about censorship in a uh, manner that is already described. So yeah. uh, I, maybe Metin would like to add something else. Mm -hmm. um, in eighties, I think uh, directors want to shoot some things uh, about women, but I think they want to show something to us, but I think they are afraid of to show us something uh, more than more in their film. Mm. So because uh, some films are censorship and uh, censorship, uh, I don't know how to say, censor um, Iran. Uh, uh, there is this board of censorship in uh, yeah. the 80s. Uh, yeah. When they finish their film, they send their film to the censorship board. board, board yeah, they have, to, they have yeah. to apply for uh, permission to release yeah. their films. And then after they show, uh, watch it and then say that, yes, we, we cut some scene and we watched the film, not the original version. So maybe we watch all the films from 80s without the same original version. So I wonder uh, this original version and then censorship border version, you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So maybe we look all the film with this kind of perspective uh, because in the, these films, DVDs, we cannot see uh, any backstage video or some, um, the scene they want to shoot, but they want they didn't put the films, extra scenes. You know what I mean. Uh, so I guess this is also my queer reading. These three films uh, have some scene. Maybe the director want to shoot, but maybe they are afraid. This is my reading. But at the end of the film, I show this interview with the directors. They always reject. Yes, there is no lesbian, or there are there is no queer possibilities in our film. T two women lying on a bed because of the summer, <laughs> you know. So <laughs> sometimes I think that maybe this is kind of overrating. Uh, maybe we lost our perspective to look at films with the queer perspective. Uh, but this is my reading. This is so mm -hmm. the name is scenes I imagine. This is Metin's perspective. If you want to find with the Simon's uh, imagination, you can find other uh, missing scenes. Yeah. But I mean, it so shows so perfectly, right? Like um, how there is no truth. There is this interpretation, and the logic of everyone is a, is a bit queer in its own way. In the sense that if the director says, "Well, they were naked together on the bed because it was summer. This is normal to do in summertime," you're just like, "Okay, you know, that's your logic." <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> if you need a temperature, um, but uh, but you were talking a little bit about how the the audience was responding to the film and already imagining other films and that and that there's such an invitation in this film. Can you say a little bit more about the audience response? Because you've showed it. I mean, this is your international premiere, but you've showed it in uh, in Turkey. Um. At first, we went to the Golden Orange Film Festival, and we have a one screening in there. Uh, after the film, a, a queer person sent me a message from Instagram and said that I live in Antalya, Metin. I'm so happy to see in Antalya to you. I'm maybe only the person in Antalya as a queer. So thank you to making this film. So this is the big uh, prize for me, you know. Mm. Uh, because, you know, uh, if you are queer and if you are a young person, you think that you are alone. <laughs> so I think these films maybe uh, feel the person, feel the audience. Yes, we are here, we are queer and we are always uh, uh, have to shoot the film and we have to apply the festival and exhibition, blah, blah. Because maybe in Turkey, uh, the festival is so straight perspective. So all the sweet person wearing and so... Uh, municipality come to the making conversation and making the open speech blah blah so in golden orange or also in istanbul film festival uh, i wear some queer clothes and making some makeup and earring blah blah to sh to express myself to the audience yes the directors can be like that in turkey <laughs> mm. so you know the film is queer so also or crew also uh want to be queer uh express um <laughs> hmm. so all yeah. the, it, because in Kadikar cinemas i wear my skirt and and maybe person some audience at first time they uh saw this kind of skirt i the director with skirt <laughs> so uh, i want to show on my own in the ordinary life i didn't wear th this kind of thing so um maybe show, the, show me to the audience like that because I've said that, yes, there is a queer director also in Turkey. Mm. This is my part. I didn't, I didn't have to audience feel with these uh, presentation, but this is my hope to show me like that to the audience. Yeah, uh, I just want to add one moment uh, in the screenings, uh, I think in Istanbul, uh, uh, after the film, uh, there was this uh, slogan uh, that uh, we were yelling at the pride. Neredesin aşkım, buradayım aşkım. Metin was uh, sitting on the uh, seat and after the uh, screening there was a Q&A section. While Metin uh, were ca uh, was coming to the stage for the Q&A section, uh, he just shouted, Neredesin aşkım and the audience was like, buradayım aşkım. And it, 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 it was a moment uh, for film to uh, realize itself with its audience. And I think it's one of the most precious moments uh, that uh, uh, telling this ambiguous story, uh, we, uh, we, we, we we came together with the audience and it, 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 it's, it's why are the cinema and it was a great pleasure for us. It's a kind of hugging each other, like yeah. an at the end of the film. <laughs> yeah. Um, we have one question from Ceran in, I think, in Berlin. Yeah. Um, and I think that Ceran's asking to clarify a little bit about uh, why you didn't choose the, the the previous actors. I think mm -hmm. the professional actresses that were first casted, whether it was because they were not queer or if they understood that correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh maybe i can start uh, the main reason that we change uh, our cast is not that uh, the first ones uh, were not queer uh, we started to talk about the scenes mm -hmm. uh, uh, i don't want to uh, put it uh, incorrect un 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 but uh, when we t uh, talk about the scenes uh, they didn't feel comfortable about what Metin had in mind and we also and we met him first and then uh, our producer team we also didn't feel comfortable or uh, about uh, 
what uh, they uh, put on the table. Uh, we, they, said, they said that my mise en scène is very graphic for my old actors. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. So it But, was too much. Yeah. So, yeah, we changed the actor after that. Yeah. <laughs> So and also, Metin uh, had asked for other possibilities. What they do in they do have in mind, like uh, maybe if they can uh, make some suggestion, we can uh, work on it. But uh, they also didn't give any uh, suggestions to us to work on. That's why we changed with the actors. Clear. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm just. This is for the audience. Uh, well, I'm asking my last question. If you have an urgent question or a non-urgent question, uh, say <laughs> it now. <laughs> Because once we're partying, Metin and Iram are not going to answer anything. They're just going to be <laughs> Um Yeah, I was just wondering, I mean, if you want to share something about whether you have something in mind as a next film, Mm -hmm. um, for the audience who hasn't seen your films yet, they are on Vimeo, your previous films, yeah. right? Um, and it's very different from your yeah. last film, from Scenes yeah. I Imagine. It's much more observational, That's true. about <laughs> gentrification. Yes. And daily life. <laughs> daily life. And um, a weird place. <laughs> And yeah, I mean, I, I, we, yeah, I think people should see it, right? They can find it online easily. Yes. When they put in Vimeo, I have a Vimeo account, and you can find my film in there also. Great. Yeah. No, it's really beautiful, and it's very different. So it's also really nice. Yeah. Um, to see more talkative films, but my previous two films is so silenced. There is only recording to the. Uh, Place and the life and the person who's shooting in the street, who's swimming, blah blah. <laughs> a little <laughs> explanation yeah. about the previous film. And this is my last question. Yeah. Um, well, maybe okay. I'm I'm asking two questions in one, if that's not too complicated, because I'm curious about this difference, right? Uh -huh. The previous films and then this film with scenes I imagine, like why this difference? And then also, of course, I'm leaping forward to what's next. Okay. Um, when I learn word flaneur, <laughs> I like it and want to call myself as a flaneur. Mm. So I want to walk all the street with an apple in my bag and with a sound recorder. <laughs> so when I'm thinking any film, sound and identification are the first two spots shaping my director perspective. So my, my previous film are about daily life and gentrification. Uh, I feel like if I didn't shoot this space, persons, buildings, maybe we would have lost all of them next day. So everything can be demolished maybe next day. So this is my responsibility as a filmmaker, recording street with my camera. Uh, but since I imagine is also an example for archive, because my previous film also a kind of archive uh, process, I may not contact the people talking in the film later, maybe. But in this movie, I gave the shape to archive and I am still an observer and not trying to give the direct message. Uh, in my previous film, I just record what I see and there was also no message. So this film also haven't got a message, only have an ambiguity argument area open the person. And uh, maybe you figure out that beginning of the film, the person open a door and at the end of the film, the door also open still. So I want to open the area for making argument each other and mm -hmm. talking about the topic in my films, not give the message directly. So my perspective is still same, but I use some documentary element as a queer method in this film. Yeah. Uh, yes, that's it. <laughs> yeah. And do you want to say anything maybe Iram knows already, is working on it, producing it already a little bit on the next film? Or am I too early to ask? No, we have a new project. <laughs> <laughs> Mithi would like to yeah. share. Maybe you know also Kubra is our friend with Simone. And Kubra is a very important a trans person in LGBT plus movement in Turkey. Uh, we want to shoot a hybrid documentary with Kubra about kind of the queer musical. 
and maybe to roll and say something. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say hello, hello, and hello. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of ambiguity in one Not of many. Many. Yeah. many. <laughs> well, this is a perfect moment to introduce the party. Yeah. Um, I'm going to ask you to introduce the party in Turkish, just in case that there are listeners who are like, without subtitles for now, like I was at the first screening in Istanbul. <laughs> Um, I want to tell everybody that we're going to, I'm going to read from the screen, Vibrant Online Club Night with Kubra, who you see right there, and Mama Keo, Kubra in Istanbul and Mama Keo in Amsterdam. Yeah. And the Zoom, the link is in the, in the um, chat, because uh, we meet, need to meet in Zoom so that we can see each other. Uh, come and join us. We're going to have a lot of fun, but for now, thank you so much, Tejukular, you <laughs> and your beautiful film. And if you are somebody watching that hasn't seen the film yet, just text us, we will send you. <laughs> we'll send the link. Do watch. <laughs> that is the queer way, right? <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, so much. Thank you, you on the and the Rick, thank you also to them. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, uh, International Queer.